Hello and welcome to the virtual bench learning uh, session. This is the third um, webinar that we're holding from the data bench uh, project and we'll be uh, assessing the performance and impact of big data analytics and AI. Um, um, uh, today um, um, We'll be uh, talking a little bit about the, the virtual bench learning. And if you're uh, interested in what you hear, you can go see the, the last two um, versions of the virtual bench learning webinars that we've held um, uh, on the data bench website. Um, my name is uh, Richard Stevens, and um, I'm the coordinator of the data bench project and I'm the uh, research director at IDC. I'm responsible for the European Government Consulting Group. Um, I'm going to walk you through uh, a little bit about what DataBench is and what it means. Um, and then we're going to hear from uh, Arne Baer, our um, technical director, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the technical framework in the DataBench project. Um, we will then move on to uh, talk to Thomas Pariente, who's going to tell us about the, the toolbox that we've developed. And then uh, we have the special edition um, of the Deep Health and EBDS projects um, today, and we're going to tell you about how they're collaborating um, with, um, with DataBench and how they're making use of, of what we're doing. So you'll hear from John Ander Gomez Adrian from uh, Deep Health and Dusan Jankovic from uh, IBDS. Um, at the end, uh, we'll be um, fielding question and answers and tell you a little bit of, um, uh, about how we see uh, the, this interaction. So if you have questions, you can drop them into the, um, uh, into the uh, chat box and um, uh, Thomas will, uh, will register them and we'll address them at, at the end of the presentations. So again, from, uh, from DataBench, that's um, myself, uh, Arne, and Thomas. From the Deep Health project, you're going to hear from uh, John and Dusan from the EBDS project. So um, uh, again, there'll also be uh, some uh, poll questions uh, that you can um, respond to during the, the, the webinar. And at the end, we will send you the, the presentations that we've made today, and we'll also keep you updated if you should, chose, uh, should so choose um, to be included uh, with virtue, uh, further webinars and other information coming from the, the project. So the first question is uh, why why a data bench? Why did we do this? Um, essentially, we find that there um, no one um, doubts the fact that benchmarking your uh, your technical applications and your um, um, and your uh, specific um, tools um, to see how well they're working is a good idea. I had come from a software company, and, and I, I, I would have been the first one to tell you that you need uh, tools to assess your, um, your applications. And actually, the, the tools that we provided were the best ones to actually assess our own tools. Um, uh, however, uh, what we find is that th there's a pretty deep, deep base of knowledge on, on how to uh, do technical benchmarking and and why to do technical benchmarking on specific uh, components. However, what what companies have told us, and uh, specifically in this project, we've um, we've surveyed 700 companies, uh, uh, and they've come and told us that they they actually lack uh, the correlation um, uh, between those technologies and the business potential of the um, of their companies and to to know exactly why they um, should be doing benchmarking um, and analyzing these tools um, is is not really clear um, which of these project which of these technologies and which of these 
um, tools and approaches have what kind of uh, uh, potential market um, effect and what kind of impact on their competitors competitiveness for things like run, return on investment um, uh, or uh, quality of their products time to uh, time to market customer churn all of those important things so we see the examples out there but we um, we uh, don't really know how to improve the tools we use uh, to make sure we're harnessing big data analytics and AI um, in the proper way the approach was essentially to um, intercept the data coming from the benchmarking tools and uh, provide metrics that compare it to uh, existing um, uh, benchmarks from the business community. So to do this, we prepared a, a benchmarking framework. We um, have uh, done analysis of the data that's out there, provided a, um, a, a toolbox uh, of um, benchmarking um, approaches that we'll get to have a look at uh, in just a minute with Thomas and um, uh, provide a, uh, a handbook or guidelines that will show people how to implement this kind of system and the types of metrics that you um, uh, need to be intercepting. The, uh, the particular approach of, um, uh, of DataBench is to merge the, um, the evaluation of technical performance on one hand with the evaluation of econ economic and market um, um, data on the other to provide specific use cases um, of of people in different vertical industries using big data analytics and AI and provide guided pathways to using um, uh, the toolbox that now you're going to hear a little bit more about. Um, um, so this is basically the idea behind uh, DataBench and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to pass the um, the the I'd like to pass the floor um, to um, Arne, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the framework. So I'm. Trying to do that now, Arne, and I've given you the, the floor. We can see your screen now. Okay, and you see me also, perhaps? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, my name is Arne Barre. I'm from Sintef Research Institute in Norway and the technical manager of the database, uh, DataBench project. So, I don't know, I advance my screen here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, this is the structure of the DataBench project um, and we will hear later about the orange box there of the, the, the DataBench toolbox. Um, you will see that we have two paths through this. Uh, one is from a technical point of view and the other is from a business point of view. Today we will focus more on the on the technical perspective but also keep in mind the business because when you talk about benchmarking, it's a question of both uh, technology benchmarks, but also on, on business benchmarks and business KPIs, and to what extent uh, the technologies are meeting uh, business needs economically, uh, from a market point of view, a business point of view. So the structure of the uh, data bench project is following both of these. Um, now also looking at evaluation of, of business performance as well as uh, technical evaluation of uh, underlying uh, big data and AI technologies. So uh, <clears throat> after my presentation we will also get the presentation of the data bench toolbox and here perspective uh, on needs of benchmarking from uh, a couple of projects uh, as, a, as a context of the discussion. So the foundation we have in the database framework 
is based on the BDVA reference model. Uh, some of you will have been familiar with from the Big Data Value Association and uh, its documentation here is in the SRIA, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda in the latest version. It talks about the different areas of uh, concern and interest in the context of, uh, of big data. Uh, we see the blue uh, horizontal and vertical lines. These are, are relevant areas of uh, concern in an overall architecture. And we see six uh, yellow boxes here of different data types that typically might have different technology support uh, throughout both uh, the horizontal and the vertical areas. So when it comes to benchmarking, obviously this leads us uh, to a perspective where we can look into benchmarks uh, and technology evaluation into each of these uh, areas. The DataBench project uh, has uh, provided a foundation for this by looking into existing benchmarks. So one of the starting points uh, and the perspective of DataBench is that there is a lot of existing benchmarks out there. Can we make use of those uh, as a foundation for uh, specific use? So do they provide value say, beyond uh, the context they have been developed in? And some of them have also been developed in a, a generic context. So uh, already we have public reports about benchmarks that we have categorized into the different areas here, uh, the horizontal as well as uh, vertical uh, cross-connected areas uh, that can be, be read. And that also has a foundation uh, into our uh, toolbox that we will present uh, a bit later. <clears throat> so uh, looking at these areas, uh, to some extent, they follow uh, a structure from the bottom up here, uh, looking at uh, the external environments and uh, IoT and sensors and actuators that are our main producers of data. Uh, also historical data available in databases uh, in the cloud, the link to high performance computing, um, the data management of, of storage systems. Often now dealing with data, uh, it's a main concern to deal with uh, authentication, data protection, access control, so that the data can be used by the right persons for the right purposes. Different kind of processing, batch, uh, real time, interactive, leading up to analytics. Uh, and analytics is not only classical data science, but now also increasingly use of AI and machine learning that is part of this, and visualization and user interaction. All of these areas are typically collect, connected together in what we call uh, pipelines. So the top level generic big data pipeline that we are using, uh, you see here going from the data acquisition and data collection through the data preparation and into the analytics, uh, dealing also with the AI and machine learning and the visualization and user interaction. These are presenting the steps through the different areas uh, shown in the reference model of the BDVA in the Big Data Value Association. It's also an extension now of concern uh, when we look into AI and the data-driven AI in particular. Some of you might have seen this figure, which is from the AI data robotics uh, PPP preparations for a strategic research, innovation, and deployment agenda. And uh, the areas we see here of uh, sensing, measurement, and perception relates to data acquisition and collection. The con continuous and integrated knowledge relates to the data preparation. The trustworthy hybrid decision making relates to the data analytics and the physical and human action and interaction relates to data visualization and user interaction. And also data for AI is, is supporting all of these to data platforms. So uh, uh, we see also an evolution of uh, these areas where the benchmarks that we will uh, present and uh, we are looking at can be enhanced also in this direction and we also see a number of dedicated AI and machine learning benchmarks that are relevant. So all of this has been collected into a, a framework uh, based on a matrix of uh, the technical areas on the left hand side and the historical uh, development of benchmarks on the lower level. So in our toolbox we have classified all of this along a number of different dimensions uh, from application domains to uh, which areas of the pipeline 
and which areas of the reference model it covers. Um, and this helps us uh, and projects and, and uh, organizations to identify relevant benchmarks uh, for the areas of concern. <clears throat> we are also interacting uh, with a number of benchmarking communities and, and they exist historically from the database uh, TPC, Transaction Process Performance Council, uh, with an evolution over uh, a number of years now. Uh, also, the latest uh, AI benchmarks uh, are included into what we are looking at and are presenting uh, through the toolbox. <clears throat> so, uh, basically, this is the framework that is instantiated into the toolbox. Here is some other contact points. We'll get back to that uh, later. But uh, basically, this is the introduction to the context uh, of uh, the approach. Um, and the communities and the benchmarks emerging from this that we have categorized and described has been digitally represented in the data bench toolbox <coughs> that Thomas will present next. So this was the uh, NOMI uh, introduction of the uh, framework and uh, just to show now how this is uh, represented in the data bench toolbox uh, Thomas will uh, continue with that in his uh, next presentation. Uh, any questions you might put into the to the chat, um, and we will address that uh, later on in the presentation as well. So please, Thomas. Thank you, Arne. I'm going to take the presented rights and uh, share my screen. One second. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah, we got it. Thank you. So thank you, Richard and Anne, for introducing the, the toolbox. I think that uh, makes more sense now to go directly to the to the demo, although I have uh, a couple of slides just to, to localize a little bit more the, uh, the, the what the toolbox is and what you can expect. So basically, the toolbox uh, is the result of this project of DataBench. It's a, or the aim is to be a kind of a one-stop shop uh, for big data benchmarking, not only from a technical perspective, but also from the business perspective, uh, allowing access to not only the technical benchmark, but also some results coming from the business side. So trying to mix both words together somehow, uh, serving the purpose of different kind of users. And here we have uh, the, the selection of users that uh, we believe that can uh, profit from using the, the toolbox and the, the tools uh, created in the in data bench. Um, uh, I would like to mention, for instance, benchmark providers, which are people that uh, normally create a benchmark, uh, design a benchmark, and they would like to advertise the, their benchmarks and be searchable through this toolbox. So they could uh, ask for a user and then create their own benchmark annotate and uh, put some tags on top of this, this venture and automatically being generated and, and searchable via the toolbox. They could be uh, more advanced and try to even to automate uh, the deployment and execution of uh, those ventures from the toolbox, but uh, sometimes it's not necessary and just uh, being able to access to the GitHub or to the repositories where the benchmark are is more than enough. We have also the technical users, which are the users that uh, mostly will benefit of uh, the benchmarking aspect, the technical benchmarking aspect. So, for instance, if you are someone that would like to to benchmark your own system against others, or you would like to to check your application or find benchmark or uh, or results from the benchmark that uh, have, have passed in the, uh, have been uh, carried out in the past, you could go to the to the toolbox and try to find uh, some some resource, the benchmark that feature needs, and even execute them if they are able to, uh, to, to automate to automate this execution or deployment, or to go directly to the page of the benchmark and, and uh, follow the instructions. Then uh, we have the business users, uh, as uh, the, uh, Richard and Arne mentioned, this user will be able to understand, to, to, to search and, uh, and try to understand what benchmarking can do for you from the business perspective, uh, what are the, ty the type of tools and benchmarks that are out there, 
getting some uh, extra information about uh, sectors, uh, potential use cases on big data and, uh, and uh, AI, uh, and similar uh, experiences from others. So that uh, sometimes helps you to understand uh, exactly what you, you are aiming at. And last but not, but not least, uh, and especially in this webinar, we are also targeting uh, the projects from the Big Data Value PPP uh, because uh, th those are our natural playground for testing and, and, and trying and, and getting feedback uh, regarding benchmarking and the, the effort that we are doing in benchmarking Big Data. And that's why we have today a couple of projects that sharing their experience and, and also setting up uh, some kind of uh, requirements for us uh, that will be quite interesting to 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 go forward in the in the coming months. So I would like I I always say that the toolbox is really a box of tools, as the name implies. So it's not a single tool; it's accessible through a single user interface, a web user interface. But it gives us, it gives us access to different different results and even tools. So we have, uh, and you will see now, a catalog of uh, technical benchmark, a catalog of knowledge, what we call knowledge nuggets. We have, but we have also uh, pointers and access to other tools, such as, for instance, this self-assessment tool that uh, allows uh, organizations to self-assess themselves against uh, against uh, the, the world of benchmarking. And we will have uh, pointers to others, such as uh, the project handbook and and uh, architectural blueprints, uh, user journeys, so many many things that uh, can be accessible from these tools, from this toolbox. So basically, the, you have to, to look at it, this toolbox as a kind of a container of different uh, bits and pieces that we are putting together in the DataBench project. So from the technical perspective uh, and the knowledge perspective, uh, the the tool, as you will see now, is divided into two main uh, aspects. One is the, the knowledge aspect, what we call knowledge nuggets, and the other one is the technical benchmarks. So uh, we have a catalog of knowledge nuggets. This is uh, simply uh, uh, some examples of uh, different uh, knowledge nuggets that we have already in the in the toolbox, uh, such as uh, business KPIs or uh, quantitative qualitative benchmark per industry use case, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we have also the, the, the technical benchmarks that Arne was talking about, uh, the, a list of different type of uh, or different benchmarking tools or uh, or different uh, different elements where you can uh, browse and uh, access to the actual uh, technical tools to perform benchmarking. So this uh, is at the end, in some cases and specific cases, uh, integrated has been integrated with the toolbox in order to be able to download, deploy, and execute the benchmarks directly from the toolbox. And this is the sample of these three that, uh, that are here. And we have a procedure in place to actually be, be able for benchmark providers to, to include and, and, uh, and integrate ma much more benchmarks if, if needed. So this is what we are, you are expecting to see. So let's go now to the, to the web page. Of the of the toolbox, which is here, let me put it in the whole screen. So it, this is the 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 web tool, as I mentioned, of the toolbox. So you can uh, you can see it here that you you have different uh, different uh, graphical elements in in the toolbox. You have a, a, a a menu here where you can access different uh, different aspects, such as the benchmarkings, uh, some search functionality access to the catalog of knowledge nuggets, uh, some access to administri uh, administrative uh, quality metrics, and also access to, as I mentioned before, to another tool such as the self-assessment tool. You have a search box where you can search for uh, for a free test uh, related to the, to the benchmarking, and you will find uh, anything related to this free text. And of course, this is, uh, I already log in as an administrator use, user, but uh, if you would like to access to the whole uh, functionality of, uh, of the toolbox, you should request a user. But nevertheless, you will find uh, that uh, even without a user, you can uh, perform a lot of things here, such as searching and, and, and browsing. But if you would like to go to, uh, to a further detail, you need, uh, you need to ask for a user. So this is the web page, a typical web page, where you have some information about uh, how to, what is the, tool, the toolbox, 
we have a couple of three videos uh, for the different type of user, for technical business and benchmark providers. So you can browse more or less what, uh, what you can do here. And then you have what we call uh, user journeys for these three type of users, uh, which are somehow um, selected uh, paths uh, for, for these type of users where they can find uh, hints on how to use the toolbox and how to find their, their desired results. This is, uh, although the tool is already, is already in place and is already accessible, this is a still work in progress. So we are continuing improving these uh, user journeys. And we plan also to get feedback from the projects, from the PP projects in order to add more user journeys or to fine tune the ones that we have. So right now, this is the first attempt, but uh, more or less the idea is, uh, is that you will be able to access to different, uh, different user journeys uh, by clicking in these uh, uh, particular links. Then you have some other shortcuts to the tools. We can uh, access to benchmark organizations. For instance, benchmark organizations are the ones that Arne was presenting before such as a SPEC or STAC or the LDBC Council, et cetera, et cetera. So you can, uh, you can browse this, uh, this information and uh, also have links to the, to the specific information that, uh, that you're browsing. So those are knowledge nuggets related to benchmark organizations, for instance. But you, you will have an, a, a link to the handbook that is still work in progress. Uh, we have, uh, we have, you have the possibility also to browse directly the technical benchmark catalog where you see the whole set of benchmarks that we have uh, already in place. There are right now around 50, more or less. We will go into more details later. Uh, we have, uh, and, and I think that it's very interesting to go uh, first to the, to the frequently asked ask questions, uh, just to check some definitions and, and some ideas that are important for you to understand. So what is big data benchmarking that sometimes is not so easy to understand for from, from people what the benchmarking is about. So you have a definition, you have a, what is a use case, which is different in our case that in, in, other, in other particular projects maybe. Uh, you have uh, the definition of business KPI of, and what kind of business KPI such as time, uh, organizational responsibility process, et cetera, we have. Uh, information about the toolbox, which, which will be the, the handbook, what is the, the self-assessment tool, uh, the reference model, the BDBA reference model that uh, already was shown by, by, by Arnes, and information about how this relates to, to DataBench, and the matrix, uh, the, 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 the file that the also uh, Arnes shown, in case you would like to access to it. You have other ways to access to this information. This is just uh, the frequent ask questions panel, and we, will, we plan to to add here more and more information in case it's needed. You have also access to architectural blueprints for selected uh, uh, selected domains, for instance, for telecommunication, agriculture, financial services. Those are examples of uh, typical pipelines uh, uh, from the point of view of the different of different uh, use cases in uh, in a specific sectors. For instance, for crop monitoring, equipment and machines optimization, agriculture, etc. So that you have. Here, several ideas of uh, how to, to, to create pipelines in these particular sectors. And uh, just taking advantage that we are, we are here, you can see that there, there are at the top uh, some specific tags uh, where this uh, particular knowledge nugget about the architectural blueprints in agriculture has been uh, annotated. And from here, you can also navigate to other uh, similar nuggets or similar uh, benchmarking that have been annotated with this particular with this particular uh, tag. For instance, if you go to technical, you will see that there are several nuggets related to technical aspects, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just for you to see that the navigation is also based on, on annotations. So if we go back to the main page, uh, just to finish with this, you have the possibility of uh, accessing the, the different information about uh, industries. We have seen the, before the, um, the nuggets related to agriculture, for instance, access to the self-assessment tool, uh, and access to the complete catalog of knowledge nuggets. So those are uh, shortcuts to access to the information. Just to go quickly to one example of a user journey, if we click in the technical user journey, you will find that we have divided these technical paths for, for users between beginner and advanced. This is, a, as I mentioned, work in progress. We are improving this as, uh, with the feedback also of the projects. And uh, here you, you, you will find some advice and suggestions 
on what to do if you are a beginner, for instance, going to the fact links, or click beginner in the in the search box. You can even have a shortcut here. So you click beginner in the search in the in the in the search box. You will find that there are several the knowledge nuggets that are uh, in what could be interesting for you to read before going further. But exactly the same happened with the with advanced user journey, where you can even have the possibility of uh, uh, having some ideas on how to run and execute benchmark from the from the toolbox. So this is uh, examples of user journeys that you may may want to have uh, if, you, if you would like to enter to this. Uh, then uh, let me just show you a couple of uh, well, about the search. I already mentioned that uh, you can uh, you can type anything here. Let's let's search for instance for Hadoop and try to find which uh, benchmark are, are uh, dealing with Hadoop uh, somehow. And you can hear a list, as you can see here, a list of uh, existing benchmarks that are talking about Hadoop, or that they, they provide some uh, benchmarking tools uh, over Hadoop, and also some uh, some particular related nuggets that maybe are important also for you to understand the type of benchmark that we have. Uh, the, the same happened with anything that you may find here. But uh, let me go to a couple of search that we have. For instance, we have a search based on the reference model of BDB. BD, uh, in particular, this uh, is the same uh, uh, visualization but that Arne shown, but here is clickable. So you can, for instance, click on the data analytics layer and you will find the, the benchmark that are related to data analytics and AI, as you can see here. Most of these uh, are uh, related with uh, with AI. You can browse, uh, browse uh, any of them. So for instance, if we enter to this one, by, by examples, you will find that all of them have this particular uh, explanation, such as a description of what the benchmark is, some references to web uh, resources, when it was at, updated last time, which is important because sometimes uh, some benchmarks are uh, not updated very often. Uh, exactly the, the, the type of Thomas, we lost you. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with uh, Thomas' connection. Ricardo, do you think that you can continue? Mm, well, I yes. guess we, we have been more or less through the main thing of the toolbox presentation. So um, it was not much more at least remaining. So instead of coming back, I think we'll, in the second time, we'll continue. Uh, and the yeah. next step we have is basically for uh, two projects to present uh, themselves um, and their perspective also related to uh, benchmarking. So I don't know if you'll show the agenda, but we can also go directly to that uh, with the two presenters we have from the Deep Health and the IBIDAS project, which are two of the projects in the um, BDVA PPP uh, portfolio projects. As you know, there might there is now currently more than 40 projects running. Um, and a number of those uh, will have some interest related to benchmarking, both technical and business benchmarking. And I will hear the, pers the perspective here from uh, uh, the data, the Deep Health project and uh, the IBDAS project. Um, so uh, okay, I just gave control to John. Yes. Perfect. So yes, then, uh, can John, you can introduce yourself and the project. Okay. Thank you. And um, can you see my? Uh, yep, we got it. Okay, I see slide. Thomas is back. Thomas, we moved forward because you were almost done. We're now with John. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I had some problems with the connection. Okay. Can I start? Okay. Yes, please. please. Go ahead. John. Okay. Well, I am John Ander Gomez. I am the technical manager of the Deep Health Project and I come from the University, Technical University of Valencia. Okay, well, first of all, I would like to, to thank the DataBench project because he 
the project invited us to participate in this virtual workshop. Uh, okay. Well, there is no time to, to present the project, but let me to highlight the, the, the goals of the project. So the main goals are these three bullet points, which are put HPC computing power at the service of biomedical applications with deep learning needs and apply deep learning techniques on large and complex image biomedical data sets to support new and more efficient ways to, of diagnosis, monitoring and treatment of diseases. Another very important is to facilitate the daily work and increase the productivity of medical personnel and in particular IT professionals in terms of image processing and also in terms of the use and training of predictive models without the need of combining numerous, numerous tools and also without to have a deep knowledge of uh, what is or how uh, deep learning techniques uh, 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 operate. And the last one is to offer a unified framework, which is the one that we want to, to benchmark thanks to the collaboration with uh, the DataBench project. So it's to offer an, a unified framework adapted to exploit underlying heterogeneous HPC and cloud architectures, supporting a state-of-the-art and next generation deep learning and computer uh, vision algorithms to enhance European-based medical software platforms. Well, I'm going to go directly to the presentation of the concept of the project. Few words. In the, in the left-hand side, we have what we see the production environment when the health professional interact with software platforms or applica biomedical application, applications. And on the right hand side, we have the ICT experts, which are the ones which are working and preprocessing images and also training models and updating the models as they have been uh, uh, improved or they have been training with new available data in order to be used in the biomedical application by the by the uh, health professionals, okay? Well, uh, for starting my, focusing my attention in, on, on this uh, virtual workshop, uh, let me to define what we understand as a pipeline in the context of the Deep Health project, okay? We have two pipelines, as you can see, the data pipeline and the model pipeline. Obviously, the model pipeline is part of the data pipeline because Training models is an important part of the data pipeline. With no data, no models to train, okay? But before go continuing, let us to highlight that this is the view of the people working on the Deep Health project of what is a pipeline, in this case for the health sector, but despite we are focusing in this project on the health sector, we think all the whole uh, data pipeline is applicable or is of appliance to any, to, any, to any sector, to any project of any sector, okay? Well, uh, the first step, which is the data, data set design step, uh, has a special relevance because wrong decision as this step imply wasting person hours in practically all the following steps. For us, it's crucial. In this step, it is very important to define guidelines Easy to understand by any people involved in the data acquisition step that usually are not too much expert people in some cases, or at least are not expert in the technical sense. And also it is very important to define protocols to check data quality during the following three steps, the data acquisition, data curation, and persistent data trash, okay, in order to detect useless data as early as possible. And to fix where is the problem or to fix the problems that are storing data which or acquiring data which is useless okay well these three steps the data acquisition data curation and, pers and persistent data storage are a continuum in fact and with a good design in the previous step i mean the data set design step all the tasks within the scope of these three steps can be carried out with a high level of automatization, which is the purpose of any project to, in order to, to, to save cost, okay? Obviously, some redesign actions could be required, mainly or in particular, 
to improve the definition of the data lake data lake structure because sometimes despite a good definition has been done in the first step when we are implementing the the data lake or the data warehouse we find that some things need to be improved okay so this is so normal so you, you well the training loop or model training loop okay this is a typical loop for train and evaluate models okay depending on the problem to be addressed the pro the models can be descriptive in order to to raise some uh, to trigger alarms could be predictive in order to give us an estimation of which be uh, the values for uh, the next week or the next month etc of different things and could be also a uh, prescriptive okay well at this point i would like to highlight the relevance of using software frameworks capable of leveraging cloud and hpc infrastructure in order to carry out the distributed training or distributed learning okay because when we are managing images and sometimes the images are so large uh, use, using all the images in a single computer even using a gpu usually is not enough we need to distribute the computing in order to get models trained in a time which is uh, how how to say a time which is under the schedule of the of the project or of the task okay well focusing on the needs and requirements that people from data bench project asked to me okay so needs and requirements of the different project in order to be a use case of the data bench project we have identified some aspects and features of data sets to be evaluated data set which are part an important part of each use case of the project hoping the questions will help us all of us to benchmark data sets at this moment i'm not going to read these questions because we are lack of time and these uh, uh, slides will be available to you all okay well concerning the needs and requirements uh, about deep learning library so the deep learning library we are developing inside the project okay uh, we identified the following features and kpis to be evaluated the speed up of the distributed learning so is the distributed learning really efficient in terms of speed up convergence when we do distributed learning sometimes the convergence of the network is compromised so does the distributed learning reach the same model accuracy in less time because maybe due to the stochasticity we can imp uh, implicit in the in the distributed learning it could happen that we need much more epochs to converge a network when we use distributed learning so maybe the convergence and the speed up we have to find a trade-off between these two these two elements usability how long does a developer need to use the libraries effectively integrability how difficult it is to integrate the libraries as part of solutions to deploy and some kpis we identify it like time of training models and perform the balance or the trade-off between performance power and accuracy and we hope you will help us to find other aspects or the features of the kpis we have to evaluate regarding the deep learning library and regarding the software platform which are which is an important part of the of the deep health project and um, which is more business oriented uh, we are interested also in evaluating other aspects like usability how long how long does a domain application expert need to manage the software tool effectively completeness does the application platform provide all the algorithm procedure functions to allow domain application experts to easily define the sequence of steps in order to implement the data and or model pipelines because if the domain application experts needs too many things maybe or too many uh, frameworks to be combined then the the person hours will increase uh, uh, in in, an, in a in a relevant way compatibility how many data formats does the platform admit to import to export data and models from to other other frameworks 
and some KPIs we define it in the project, but uh, we are open to, to evaluate more KPIs. Time to model in production and time of pre-processing images in order to prepare data as input for the training models and of course others. Well, that's all from my side and uh, thank you very much for your attention and it will be a pleasure, a pleasure to answer your questions and to listen to your suggestions. Thank you very much. So now I have... Okay, Jan Ander, um, please uh, add your questions uh, to the chat. We'll address those at the end to keep in line with the timing. I think we'll switch directly to Diabetes Project uh, with uh, Dusan. So uh, we see your screen now. So uh, please go ahead, uh, Dusan. Thank you, Arne. Um, I'd like my name is Dusan Jakovetic. Uh, I'm from University of Novi Sad, uh, Faculty of Science in Serbia. Um, uh, from the project IB, the Industrial Real Big Data as a Self Service Solution. Uh, I would like to thank uh, DataBeams Project for giving us the opportunity in this webinar to present our, our perspective of, of, on benchmarking. So, uh, my talk uh, will uh, first briefly introduce the IBIDAS project. Uh, then, I will um, present uh, uh, the IBIDAS pipeline uh, and the, the architecture and technologies that we have in the background. Then, briefly uh, mention how IBIDAS relates to the BDA reference model. And finally, uh, I'm going to present the benchmarking landscape and, uh, and needs of IBIDAS. Uh, we can we can act uh, in the context of uh, collaboration with DataBench both as uh, uh, techno uh, technology users uh, or technical users and the business users, and um, so I, I will try to to present uh, uh, briefly uh, what we have, what is the landscape currently, uh, some some points of connection in relation with DataBench and and also the needs that we have. So very briefly, I bid this <clears throat> started uh, January 2018, which means that we have about six more months uh, uh, till the project end. Uh, this is a research and innovation type project. Um, we are a consortium of 13 partners, and um, here are the uh, the links on various media where you can reach us. Uh, we are a well-balanced consortium with uh, large and small industries, research institutes and universities, and the coordinator is Ford from Greece. Um, uh, just briefly about what the IBIDAS project is about, uh, you can see here several important dimensions for IBIDAS. I would like to highlight three of them. So IBIDAS provides uh, an end-to-end -end big data as a self-service solution. By self-service, we mean a big data solution that can be used by uh, industrial in-house employees and in this way um, be able to more directly interact with the big data technologies and, and harness uh, the value from their uh, in-house big data. Uh, the second uh, dimension is that uh, through several activities within the project and uh, through several technologies, say BIDAS, uh, uh, is uh, trying to break industrial silos that exist both uh, within a company, within a single sector, or across multiple sectors. And finally, um, IBIDAS uh, 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 provides a completed safe environment for methodological big data experimentation. And in particular, we focus on uh, manufacturing, telecom, and financial or banking sectors uh, all of them being included in, in, the, in the research and surveys from, from DataBench, I believe. Uh, so um, about the this pipeline, uh, here you can see um, a conventional end-to-end uh, -end big data pipeline. I'm going to focus on some uh, key aspects uh, that IBIDAS is trying to, uh, to target. So first on the side of users, we provide a flexible solution that uh, tries to accommodate the needs from different types of users. So in particular, we have three modes, expert, self-service, and co-develop. Expert is meant for expert big data developers that, um, uh, that basically upload their developed big data code to the platform. The self-service mode is meant for data scientists who can select a predefined algorithm based on the available uh, list uh, in the platform. And the co-develop mode is meant for uh, in-house industrial employees that will develop their own application with the help of IBDAS team. 
on the side of data, we include uh, the feature of uh, fabricating realistic synthetic data. Uh, we have technology uh, uh, called TDF by IBM, and uh, this uh, helps in uh, uh, situations, for example, in early development stages when there is no uh, sufficient real data available or where due to privacy uh, concerns, it's, it's hard to, to share the real data. On the side of analytics, we cover both stream and batch analytics, and we allow it to visualize results and share models. Uh, from the perspective of technologies, here you can see a complete architecture of, uh, of uh, IBIDAS project. Uh, I'm not going to focus how it works, uh, just uh, breaking down according to IBIDAS work packages, presenting what we have in there. So on the side of data user interface and visualization, we have the TDF tool by IBM, universal messaging by Software AG, which is a message broker, and AVT by Aegis, which is a tool for advanced visualization. On the side of batch analytics, we have the COMPS programming model by the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, Hecuba, uh, which is a data management tool, uh, Cubist, which is a data indexing tool, and advanced machine learning module, which is a set of uh, machine learning implementations developed within the project uh, in the COMPS programming framework. For the streaming analytics, we have complex uh, event processing engine by Software AG and uh, GPU accelerated analytics by Ford. And finally, on the side of resource management and integration, we have the Atos resource management tool and ITML integration services. Uh, as with the other BDA PPP projects, uh, uh, the big data, the BDA reference model is, uh, is an important reference for us. And uh, uh, the EBITDA's architecture and the technologies uh, can be mapped to uh, vertical and horizontal concerns of, of the reference model. So this is an example of mapping EBITDA's uh, tools and technologies to the BDVA uh, horizontal concerns. So for example, on the side of data analytics, uh, we have uh, the batch and streaming analytics modules that involve several technologies of EBITDA's. For example, the machine learning implementation in COMPS, uh, uh, GPU accelerated analytics, etc. And the final, uh, let's say, most important part of the presentation is to show uh, very briefly the, the benchmarking landscape uh, and needs of IBIDAS. So I'm going to present it from the, from the uh, technical level, uh, technologies level, uh, that is. Um, data and analytics level and, and the business level. So, uh, so first, going at the technology level. So what you can see here is the EBITDAS technologies. Uh, so the, you can see the responsible uh, EBITDAS partner, the technology name, uh, the big data pipeline element the technology is responsible for, and the current benchmarks that are used. Uh, so, um, what you can see here, for example, is that uh, in many cases, uh, we are currently either using custom benchmarks or applications uh, um, uh, developed within the same tool. Um, there are a few exceptions, like for example, for the QBIS technology by Barcelona Supercomputing Center, which is meant for multi-dimensional indexing and storage, uh, we are using T TPC TPCH uh, benchmark, which is, uh, I think available as a um, um, uh, searchable benchmark in the current uh, data bench uh, framework. Uh, on the side of uh, machine learning algorithm implementations in COMPS, we are looking at the respective, let's say, lower level MPI implementation. <clears throat> and then we are trying to uh, match uh, the, 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 the MPI, which is, uh, very, uh, which controls the resources in, in a very um, detailed way at the cost of a huge effort uh, on the programming side. So we are trying to reduce the, the, this effort and uh, try to have um, a performance that can be close to MPI in this sense. Um, but uh, we believe that, um, uh, so, so these technologies are, uh, dealing with the visualization, batch and streaming analytics. Uh, uh, so basically all the elements of the pipeline and uh, 
we believe that there are many po uh, points of potential uh, use of, uh, of the benchmarks that are available in the data bench framework. On the side of uh, business data and analytics, you can see here the landscape uh, of IBIDA. So you can see for, for our data providers in the three sectors, manufacturing, finance, and telecom, uh, uh, the, the data providers business objectives, uh, the respective data sets, uh, indicative sizes, uh, and the processing type uh, for the analysis. Um, what's interesting to point out is that uh, uh, by, by, by checking the, the surveys done by DataBench, uh, we can see that the goals of our data providers are similar to the ones uh, available in, data, in the DataBench survey. So for example, improve and optimize current operations or improve the quality of process and product um, are, are the, the, the metrics that can also be found in the data bench survey. Um, uh, on, also, Kaisha Bank's improved decision making uh, relates to improved operational fraud and risk management available in the data bench survey. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, improve efficiency of big data solutions is uh, one objective that is, uh, let's say, more specific uh, to IBIDAS. But there are certainly lots of uh, uh, common, uh, common points. And finally, at the business level, uh, what you can see here is the landscape uh, of the IBIDAS uh, use cases from the perspective of the most relevant business KPIs. And uh, what you can see here is the business KPIs in two colors. The blue ones are the ones that are common uh, for IBDAS and DataBench um, as provided in DataBench survey. And the, the uh, black ones are the ones that um, are different uh, as reported by the IBDAS uh, uh, data providers. So for example, on the side of uh, Kaisha Bank and financial sector, cost reduction are, are time efficiency are common points uh, of interest, while, for example, data accessibility is something that uh, uh, was specific for IBIDAS. Um, so thank you very much for uh, attention. Uh, it would be great to, based on this uh, landscape and needs uh, uh, by IBIDAS, to, to find uh, um, uh, ways of use, of use uh, for IBIDAS, uh, both from the perspective of technology users and uh, and uh, and business users thank you thank you very much uh, dusan so these were uh, two projects uh, deep health and ibidas uh, that both are uh, looking for collaboration opportunities uh, with the data bench and the, and the toolbox that we will follow up with in uh, the coming weeks and months um, you see some of the contact points here. We will also do that uh, for other organizations. The, obviously, the, the goal is for the toolbox to be, say, self-sustaining uh, uh, and uh, answer the questions you might have through interactive use. But knowing, the, as Thomas pointed out, we are still evolving this, so we will also be able to work directly with organizations that. Uh, have an interest in uh, benchmarking. Uh, there was a question uh, from the audience on, on uh, say, business perspective versus technical perspective. Most of the existing benchmarks are of more uh, technical nature, say benchmarking technologies. But as you saw from the beginning, there's also a goal of Data Bench Project to support business benchmarks and uh, basically to look at KPIs that are not only technical but uh, qualitative on uh, uh, in different ways. So we had one question, uh, if we also will look into benchmarks for the maturity or productivity of data mining, engineering process or life cycle, uh, say how to, uh, for instance, explorative data analytics or data understanding might be used in a respective organization. So there is, it's an intention to cover parts of this perspective in the work uh, we do on the business track. Um, and we would be interested in working with organizations uh, on that uh, with the team uh, we have from the business perspective. 
uh, as well as those that might have uh, uh, an interest in technology benchmarking along all of the areas that you saw in the BDV reference model as well as the in the AI PPP uh, model. So uh, use the contact points uh, you see here to follow up with us or some of the, the presenters directly uh, because we have allocated some time and resources to work with the users now in the in the coming weeks and months. So that included uh, some questions to some of the uh, or some answers to some of the questions we got. Uh, another question was uh, to what extent do we envision to, to provide the benchmarks to other organizations, particularly in the AI and the AI for EU, EU uh, platform. So a, a short question is that uh, the data bench toolbox uh, is a tool that can be linked to and associated with uh, various platforms. And uh, with the data bench partners, there are also partnerships in AI for EU. So that's one of the things we will explore. How that related uh, context can be maybe um, uh, say supported somehow, in particular with the emerging number of AI benchmarks that we have been working on lately. So that was some comments uh, from me to some of the questions. Uh, maybe others uh, from the presentation team, so the of the project uh, have some uh, additional comments. Richard or Thomas or uh, Dusan or John or others uh, on the presentation side. Actually, Arne, thank you very much. Um, we we are at the end of our time slot. Uh, of course, um, all of us in DataBench uh, are available to, to field uh, questions more than anything else. As Arne was saying, we have um, his, some activities and resources dedicating, dedicated to helping you use uh, the, the toolbox uh, and um, getting, in, uh, getting involved with, with your project. Um, uh, to to run um, to run benchmarks like uh, those in in AI for EU, um, and uh, we are um, always available, and you can reach us at the the contacts uh, that you see uh, on the left or directly right to any of us. Um, all of our contact details can be found um, on the DataBench website, which is um, uh, www dot databench dot eu and there you can also access the um, the resources like the toolbox and has um, a lot of the uh, knowledge nuggets and and um, surveys and things like that 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 Thomas was talking about. I'd personally like to thank all of you for uh, attending uh, this webinar and um, keep in touch and make sure you follow the the next series of of webinars from us if if this is um, interesting and do get in touch uh, with us directly if you want to use the toolbox and get involved. I um, specifically want to um, thank John and Dusan for for your uh, already uh, strong commitment to collaborating with us um, and and for your excellent presentations uh, today. So um, from from DataBench uh, side, uh, thanks a lot for coming, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, everyone.